Good morning. Welcome to Mr. Way's fifth grade classroom here at Garden City Elementary. Uh, we'd like to welcome Mr. Crossland here to introduce our lesson to us on what is the sun. The sun. In fact, I will tell you also that this is a model, and like all models, there's some things it can do and some things it can't do. And the thing that I hate about this model is it's wrong. The scale is wrong. I can't really show you the right scale. If this was the sun, the planets would not be that close to it, and the planets would not be that size. As a matter of fact, almost every picture you see on the internet or in your books is wrong. And I hope they write not to scale. If they write not to scale, it makes sense. But let, let's see what can we really learn from this. So what do the planets do? What is it called when the planets do this? Anybody? Yes. They orbit. They go around. So as you can see right away, some planets are close to the sun. So do you think that that would be a long time to get around or a short time? And then some planets like Neptune are so much further around the sun. Short or long time? Long time. In fact, let me show you what I mean by that. Here is another model I like to use, okay? And so my hand would be the sun. And this would be the earth, right? So the Earth does two things. First of all, the Earth will do this. Ready? Can you see this? Anybody know what that's called when the Earth spins on its axis? That's a... Uh, speak in words. Uh, it, I heard it over there. It is rotate. Rotation. This is day, night, day, night, day, night, day, night. If that's rotation, then what is this? Orbit or the other R word. Revolution. This is rev everybody say revolution. revolution. And then say rotation. rotation. Now here's what's really happening. My fist is the sun. sun or the soul. So we're rotating and revolving. Is it still rotating? And revolving. So this is day night, day night, day night, day night, day night. Guess what this is? One year. Two years. Every time it goes around the sun, that's a year. Re revolution or orbit, right? Now, I'm doing this in a circle. It's not really a circle. It's more of a, this part's longer, this part's shorter. Longer, it's more of a, an ellipse, you know, like a flattened circle. You got that? So how many times have you been around the sun? How old are you? Ten? You've made ten trips around the sun since you were born. You were probably born right about here. One-year-old, happy birthday. Two, three, four, five. Your parents probably gave you a party. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and you're somewhere over here. Now, uh, I've been doing this for a long time, <laughs> a real long time. I have made 61 trips around the sun. Does that give you any idea how old I am? Uh, yeah, I, on Fridays I look older. Now, but check this out. What if your Mercury, Mercury is the planet closest to the sun. What would that orbit look like? What would the orbit look like? Yeah, we'll do it again. Right? Here, this is Mercury. Ready? In fact, I think it's something like 88 days. Next week, you're going to pick the inner planets and, and kids can start a planet journal. And if you pick Mercury... The orbit of Mercury is like 88 days. Now, if I lived on Mercury and I had a birthday, first of all, I can't live on Mercury. There's no atmosphere. It's too close to the sun, and there's no food or air. But if I lived on Mercury, look here, check it out. 88, so I'm 61. What's uh, 6 times 8? So we're talking about, oh, my goodness, I'd probably be about almost 200 Mercury years old. But those are Mercury years, so that doesn't count. Still, I'd still be 61. But so here, here's the Earth's orbit. 
And here is, if I make this shorter, here is Mercury's orbit. So you should stop thinking, what is, what's a planet that's way out there? Let me help you figure this out. My very eager mother just served us nine, um, I used to say pizzas, but Pluto is no longer considered a planet. And when I first heard that, I got real upset. I said, how dare you take away my planet? <laughs> my very eager mother just served us nine pizzas. So I changed it, and I found out why. If you look, Pluto is so far away from the sun, and it's so small, they don't call it a planet. They changed it to a, anybody know? A dwarf planet or a planetoid. And here's why. Out here, far away, there are over 5,000 things like this. We'd have to come up with 5,000 new names. Pluto 1, Pluto 2, no. So we call this a dwarf planet or a planetoid. But these guys, they, uh, Neptune, so now I say it like this. My very energetic mother just served us nachos. It helps me remember the planets. So let's take a look at Neptune, right? Oh my goodness, this gets dangerous. Okay, so Neptune's orbit is way out there, right? Yeah. See, I, I, you know, watch out. You don't want a planet to hit you. And so if you live on Neptune, <laughs> what? If you live on Neptune, uh, you wouldn't even have a birthday because... I, I don't know, you have to look it up, but I think it takes over 170 <laughs> years to go around. Okay, now, just. The sun. <laughs> oh, think about the sun. If you're the sun and you're on Neptune, you look up in the sky, are you going to get a sunburn? No. I doubt no. it. <laughs> the sun is going to look like this little bitty fuzzy speck so far away. But, you know. Okay, here's my last question for you. And if you before if you get on Jeopardy or Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, before you answer this question, call Mr. Way or call me, because we'll help you. Of course, we're going to get some of the money, right? So here's my question: What holds what holds all of this together? What's holding these planets together? Yes. Yes. But what's what's the thing, the force that holds? No. Let me show you what happens. There's something holding this. Because here's what this planet wants to do. Yes, what is it? From the sun, it's the sun's gravity. gravity. Yes. Watch what happens. My This string represents the gravity force. The planet wants to go and keep moving, rotating. The sun holds it. Here's what happens if there's no gravity. Are you ready? Three, two, one. <laughs> You've just been destroyed by the planet. Okay, so here's what here's what Isaac Newton, when he studied laws of motion, he says an object wants to go in a straight line unless it's interrupted by another force. Basically, ready? So this is this wants to go like this. This wants to go like this. Hey, I'm two for two. But what holds it from going in a straight line? What's pulling on it? Gravity. 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 Now here's our question. You probably have seen movies where there's astronauts floating in space, right? So here's the question. And think wisely, young one, before you answer this, because you may not get the money. Is there gravity in outer space? No. 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 no gravity. If there is no gravity, then we'd all be dead because that would happen. Yay! So is there... <laughs> so my question is, is there gravity in space? Yes. Yes. There has to be gravity in space because without gravity in space, all these planets would leave. Okay, I want you to think about that for just a second. Okay, so let's get back to what the sun is. You know the importance of the sun in the solar system. My two volunteers, come on up here. So remember I told you that most of the pictures we see are not to scale? I thought that might be good. If, what if I used this? What does this look like to you? A marble, and, and look, you can see. Yeah, it's, but it's, it's, I, I painted on there the continents. So what if we make the Earth this size? How big should the sun be? Now, we could draw this in our book, right? Well, I did the math, and if we made the Earth diameter this big, the diameter of the sun needs to be this big. Help me out here, guys. Let's turn it like this, open it up like this. Come over here to the side. Oh my goodness, check it out. So uh, what I'm trying to tell you guys is this, if we did it to scale, 
This is the size of the earth compared to the sun. Oh, we just had a sun drop. <laughs> now, does that kind of mess with your head a little bit? No? Now, the sun, uh, the, if the sun's that big, though, we would not be that close to it. We'd be so far back. Well, you guys did this activity last week, and we saw that the earth would be about 68 meters away, so all the way down the end of the hallway. Now, if you noticed uh, uh, what the kids have done in my other class, I want you to add to this, too. The sun, you're going to learn, has about eight different parts that you need to know. It has a core. It has sunspots. It has a corona. It has solar flares, prominences. And all of this is, be because of all of this, we have life. Do uh, you guys know uh, the story about uh, Goldilocks? You know, this, yeah. this, this girl that breaks into some people's house, yeah. tears up their stuff, steals things. Yeah. You hear that basketball over there. Well, I'm going to use the word Goldilocks for just something to explain to you. Let me see that. Thank you. So if you're a planet like Jupiter, and you're this far away from the sun, you're too far away. It's like Goldilocks. This porridge was too cold. Wouldn't work, okay? Hand me another uh, small ball there, please. So Jupiter is too far away from the sun, right? Okay. Here is Mercury. Mercury, besides being a scary skeleton or jack lantern, <laughs> Mercury is too close. The porridge is too hot. Hold that one. Can you hold this too? So this is too close to the sun. This is too far. The Earth, we call that the Goldilocks zone. The earth is not too hot, not too cold. It's at the right spot for this size sun. So scientists, this is the cool part. When scientists and astronomers look up at the stars and they see another star, because our sun is a star, they look, they, they, if they see a, a planet, which means wandering star, if they see a planet this close to the sun, they think, probably not life there, too hot, like Mercury. And Venus. And if they see a planet this far from the sun, they were probably too cold. But then, if they look at through a telescope and all of a sudden they see a shadow going across the sun, a shadow, that means there's a planet orbiting the sun that might be just right. Not too hot, not too cold. They call that the Goldilocks zone. And we have found over 50 or more planets orbiting stars in the universe. That's pretty cool. In fact, let's check out what NASA has done with pictures of our sun, and you're going to see Mercury going across the front of the sun. Let's check it out. Several years taking pictures of the sun. And it's called helio physics, because helio means sun. And what they've done here is they put these all together. This is so amazing. For five years, millions and millions of pictures to make this. I'll show you it's going to look really cool in just a second. These are some of the things you're going to be reading about and learning. Our sun is an explosion of hydrogen every second coming together, sending out light, heat, radiation. And in a minute, you'll see. Like, if you're looking at that and you see something go across it, that tells you that there might be a plan there. You can feel a little bit of this. This is really pictures of our sun, up close. Now, if you notice, you can't look at the sun because it will destroy your eyes. There's some special filters. Here is Mercury looking at the sun. We have solar flares. The is so You know, we know a lot about the sun. If you want to be scientific, call it the heliophysics. Helio means sun. We have a core. We have a corona, a photosphere. That is so cool, a photosphere. And these prominences. Okay, so... What I hope to tell you is, <laughs> if you look, uh, uh, has anybody had their mind kind of blown yet? 
Have you learned anything new yet? Yes. Yes. I gotta tell you something. This is kind of weird or cool. Check this out. Where's my two helpers again? Come on up here. Okay. Now, this involves some math, so you need to get your math hands on, right? Science, we use math. Math is the language of science. Okay, so the, the sun, the sun is 93 million miles from here. 93 million miles. Do you have a calculator on your, on your phone? Okay. All right, light. Here's, here's what I'm saying. If this is the sun, if we could turn it off, if we could turn it off, how long will it take for that light to get to the earth? Any idea? Let's pretend we could turn off the sun. Oh, you need to, you need to know how fast light travels, right? Does anybody know how fast light travels? Scientists say that light travels 186,000 miles per second. 186,000 miles. I mean, I turn on a flashlight, boom. So here's my question. If we turned off the sun, how long would it take for the sun to be dark? Because it's 93 million miles away. So let's take 93 million. Um, oh, it's 186,000 divided by 186,000 miles per hour. How many, uh, uh, okay, uh, am I doing this right? <laughs> what number did you get? 500. 500. So that's going to be 500 seconds. Divide that by 60. 8.3. About eight minutes, about seven or eight minutes, it would still shine until it went dark. So this is the really weird part. If you look at a star, that star is so far away that the light coming to you, Ready? Here comes the light coming to you. That light has taken thousands of years to get to you. This morning when I was driving to Garden City, I saw a planet up there. I saw Mars. And when I saw it, I was thinking, okay, the light went from the sun, hit Mars, bounced off of that, and came all the way back to us. And that took about 20 minutes, 30 minutes. So... What I'm trying to say is things are big and they're far apart. We're going to try to figure this out, okay? So we need to talk about something called scale. A scale, all right? Now, last week, you used the scale to make a solar system model in the hallway. And the scale you used last week was how far are the planets from the sun? So we're going to talk about scale diameter. Does anybody know what a, a, a diameter is? A diameter. It's a ge uh, it's a uh, geometry a geometry term. Anybody know what a diameter is? Yes, sir. It measures angles. Um, you're close. Uh, that's a uh, protractor measures angles, but the diameter is a measurement. So you got that part right. So here's a circle, right? With a center, kind of. What is the diameter? Sometimes we call that d. I A or D I A M. So what is the diameter? Anybody? The distance, yes. Um, diameter is like the top of the sun. Excuse me? Um, the a diameter is all the way across a circle, right? So this is called a diameter. See that? Half of that, right here in the middle. Half of that we call a radius, a radius, sometimes with a small r. So go ahead and make a radius on there for me. In the middle, across, another line segment, right about there. That is a radius. Okay, so go ahead and draw that on the back of your paper. What is the diameter? Label it DIA. Now, here's the interesting thing. What if the diameter, DIA, right here, what if the diameter is two meters? If the diameter is two meters, what is the radius? Anybody? If the diameter is two meters on this drawing right here, so this is two, what would the radius be? What would the radius be? Yes. Excellent. One meter. So if the diameter is two, the radius is one meter because it's half. Let me ask you this. What if the radius is three? What's the diameter? If the radius is three, what's the diameter? Two. Six. 
six, the diameter is twice the radius. You get that's something you need to know first before we do this lesson. Okay? So we have diameter and radius. When you look at a planet, often we talk about the diameter. How far across is it? And we use what's called kilometers in size. Finally, it shrank to the size of a marble, the most beautiful marble you can imagine. Seeing this has to change a man. James Irwin, the Apollo 15 astronauts. Back in the early 60s, our country made a pledge to land a man on the moon before the end of the decade. President John F. Kennedy said that, NASA started it, and on July 1969, an American landed on the moon, two of them, and walked down. This video is about a guy, a couple guys, that try to make a scale of the solar system using this marble as the size. If you look up an image of the Earth and Moon, you're going to get a picture where they're quite close together. Something like that. But in reality, the Earth and Moon are about about that far apart. That is the Earth and the Moon. Okay. If you get the, if you understand this part right here, you're going to learn this lesson. I wish I had a Q-tip. You don't have a Q-tip hanging around there. <laughs> because look, if the Earth is here, the Moon, the Earth this size, the Moon would be way over here and it'd be the size of a Q-tip. That's to scale two ways. You understand that? It's a scale to size and it's a scale to distance. This video is about uh, making a scale model. Last week, we made a scale model to size, right? This week, we're going to make a scale model to the size. Last week was distances, sorry. Last week was distances. This week is size. And that's what it should be. That, was that eraser would be the moon. This marble would be the earth. You see why you can't put that in a book? That drawing, it's bigger than the book, right? You see? That's why this is wrong. All right, I won't interrupt the thing I want you to think about the rest of your life. Is that this marble right here is so small compared to everything else. And we live on it. And some people might say we're not doing a very good job living with each other or living with the planet. Every time you hear in the news, something bad's going on. But there's no other place to go, kids. This is it. This is, you saw how long, it would take, it would take over almost a year and a half just to get to Mars. Once you get there, there's no water that we know, of, there's no air, there's no food. Well, I guess what I'm saying is there have been 24 people in the Apollo program that took off, blasted off in a Saturn V rocket bigger than Garden City, Head, went around the Earth using up all their fuel, and then shot towards the moon. It took them three days to get to the moon. Three days coasting. By then, their rocket was the size of a bus because all the rest had been used up as fuel. They get to the moon. They start orbiting the moon. Two of them land on the moon. Two of them land on the moon. They land in something about the size of a minivan. They get out, they walk around. On When they're done, they leave half of that on the moon, they go back up, they get back in their command module, fire the rockets three days to get back to Earth, three days. On the way to the moon, on the way back, they look out their window, and the Earth looked like a beautiful marble. Now look at this marble. What's your name? Larry? Watch this marble. As you get closer, it's round. But what does it look like? Shut one eye. Shut one eye. As it gets... Closer to you, what does it do? It's bigger. And everybody take a look. Take your thumb and put it up here by your eye. Shut one eye. The thumb looks big. But as you get farther and farther away. So can you imagine what it was like to be on the moon and see the earth come up? Now, I've, I've been uh, lucky in my life and fortunate. I spent a week with Alan Bean, the third man to walk on the moon. I picked him up in Indianapolis Airport. I was his host for a week when we did some art, we did some science. And then I spent another week down in Houston with a guy named Gene Cernan. He was the last man to walk on the moon. These 24 American heroes 
had actually looked out the window and seen the Earth this size on the way to the moon and the way to the back. And we're going we're gonna to see him here. Check it out. It's 7 a.m. We just woke up right before the sun's about to rise. We are on the Earth's orbit. Wiley is over there holding our sun. Cue the dramatic sunrise music. There's something wrong with you. <laughs> I'm just saying. All right, so, man, I'd like to uh, go over and see that stuff. Would you? Here's the thing. I'm not like Mr. Downer. You kids are so, so much smarter than when we were kids. You're going to solve these problems. You're going to make this earth a better place. You're going to find ways to keep the air and the water clean. And I hope that you're going to find ways to get along. It's up to you. I've been around 61 times, man. I got another 30 out. 20? I don't know. But you guys have a lot more traveling. You're traveling right now. Right now, you're traveling hundreds of miles Hundreds of thousands of miles an hour. You're rotating, you're revolving, and you're expanding. Okay. But how do we understand that? Let's take a look at a worksheet. Turn your worksheet back over. Go online. Exploratory is my kind of museum. Let's go uh, bring it on up right about there. Now, this is also very confusing. Now, I've helped you with this a little bit. What this is is a scale that they have made. Can I write on this? Yes. Okay. So... I want you to forget about this part right here. We don't need this for today. And uh, we're not going to do inches, so I don't want you to do the blue. We're going to use millimeters. Oh, millimeters. Now, just to review, I have a meter stick. Got it? This is one meter, right? One meter. Yes, yes, you understand this? Yes? How many centimeters are in a meter? Your centimeter is about the size of your baby finger. So a meter equals how many centimeters, do you think? Oh, how many cents are in a dollar? How many cents are in a dollar? A hundred. Centa means divide by a hundred. So one meter is a hundred C N. Got that? Look at your ruler though. Those little bitty things are called milla. MMs, which stands for millimeter. And that's why I get to use my fake Italian accent. Milla flora, milla milla, which means you probably think, what is he talking about? <laughs> Sometimes I wonder myself. Milla means divide by what do you think? No, nope, that's Cinta. Cinta means Cinta means divide by a hundred. What do you think Milla? A thousand. So here's the hard question. Not on Jeopardy. How many millimeters are in one meter? How many millimeters? A thousand. A thousand. This is a thousand. Look at your centimeter ruler. Look at your ruler. See the little centimeters? There are 10 millimeters in each centimeter. 10. So if you look at these centimeters right here, ding, 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 ding. There are 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. So the millimeters are what we're going to talk about. Okay? All right. So, Mr. Mr. Way, help me out here. Yep. This sun right here, see the sun we have? It is 2 meters. Here's my hard question. If one meter is a thousand millimeters, two meters is how many millimeters? Two thousand. You got it. Type in two thousand in the green right there. Don't hit calculate yet. And here's what's beautiful about this. Look on your worksheet where it says solar system object, the diameter in millimeters. Right in there on that first line, two thousand mm. Right, 2,000 mm. Uh, maybe I can write it. Okay, 2,000 mm. All right, watch what happens when Mr. Way hits calculate. You can do this on your own laptops. We're going to see if we made the sun 2,000 millimeters, this is going to populate the diameter. You guys know what a diameter is? Remember a diameter? Yes, yes. So this is the diameter. 
if the sun, which is called Sol, is 2,000 of these across, do you think Mercury's going to be more or less? More, less. Less. Any idea? Let's find out. Go ahead and calculate. Boom, look. Mercury is 6.9 millimeters. 6.9. You know how big that is? You can draw that on the bottom of your page. 6.9 is about that. It's about that big. Look at your centimeter ruler and find six of those, almost seven of those little guys. Okay? So this is going to be about like that. 6.9 what? MM, right? That's pretty small. That's smaller than a centimeter. How many, okay, let's uh, um, look on your worksheet where it says, what is the, what is, how many centimeters is 2,000 millimeters? Anybody know? Next. How many centimeters? Yeah, take away a zero. How many centimeters? It's 2,000. 200. So right here, 200 cm. Cms. Okay? How are we doing over here? So this is 2,000 planets on that paper. For example, which one could you fit Jupiter? Oh my goodness, Jupiter is Jupiter is 205 millimeters. Go to Jupiter, right now. Go go down to Jupiter. Jupiter is 205 mm's. Now, how many cm's will that be? Take away, divide it by 10, what's it going to be? Let's just say 20. So it's how many centimeters? 20.5 cm. In fact, let's try to draw that. Let's, let's, uh, let's someone bring up Jupiter. 205 millimeters. And that's the same thing as 20.5 centimeters, right? What's the actual diameter of Jupiter up there on the chart? Somebody read it for me. 142,000. 184. 184 what? Bananas? Co yes, KMs. Okay, so let's see. Can we make can we make a picture drawing of Jupiter? Because it's going to have to be 20 centimeters in diameter. So here we go. Here is 20 centimeters in diameter. So there's 20, there's one, and there's the middle. The whole circle would have to be, would it fit on that paper? Would it fit on there? No. I don't think so. Let's, <laughs> I don't think we're going to be able to draw Jupiter on this paper. So, Mr. Way, you're going to have to probably get another piece of paper for that, okay? But let's just try. Can I borrow your, your, um, your, I don't even know if we'll be able to do it here. We'll try. So if we make this 20 centimeters diameter, so there's here, here is the center, that's 20 cm diameter, right? Yes, yes? Mm -hmm. Let's see if we can do this. Let's put this in the middle and come out to right about here. Let's see. Hold the paper for me. Thank you. Jupiter would be that big. So it does fit on there. Not very well, right? <laughs> so Jupiter fits on this piece of paper. Let's pick a, who would like to pick another planet? What's another planet you want to try? Neptune. Neptune. Let's try a smaller one, an inner planet. Pluto. Uh, uh, inner planet. Oh, Pluto, yeah. Oh, Pluto, yeah. Done. There's Pluto, done. <laughs> well, we'll, do, we'll do Pluto. What is, what is, how many millimeters is Pluto? 3.2. 3.2 oh, millimeters in diameter. So that's point. Three two centimeters. What's the actual diameter of Pluto? The actual diameter in kilometers? 2,274 km. So we'd have to make this 3.2 diameter. Okay, here is, we'll start, I'll start right here. There it is. That's the diameter of Pluto right there. See it? <laughs> you see that? That is three of these. You see that is three of these. Don't take my word for it. Try it yourself. And so Pluto would be this big. Oh, my goodness. There's Pluto. There's Jupiter. 
There's mercury. Let's make sure mercury is right. How, what's the diameter in millimeters of mercury? 6.9 mm, which is the same thing as 0.69 cm. So let's see if I can draw it. Here is, we'll start with, there's five, six. So here, there is, that is 6.9 mm right there. Got that? Mercury. Want to pick another one? One more? And I'll let you guys get started. Oh, you think I'm going to leave? Keep this paper. All your work's done, huh? Mars? <laughs> Mars? You want to do Mars? Yes. Yeah. Or Earth? Mars. It's up to you. We'll, we'll do Mars. Uh, how many millimeters is Mars? 9.7. 9. 9. 9. 9. 9.7 what? Bananas? Uh, millimeters. millimeters. How many centimeters is that? 0.97. What's the actual? Six thousand seven hundred and sixty. What? KM. KM, which stands for kilometers. Mm -hmm. All right, so now we have to make something Earth that is almost, that's nine of these, almost eight of them. Oh, 9.7 is almost 10. So if you start right here, tell me when to stop. Tell me when to stop. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You guys didn't tell me when to stop. Oh, oh you're supposed to stop at 10. Yeah, duh. I mean, <laughs> you're supposed to tell me to stop. I want to stop at 9.7. So here we go again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Stop. 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 Okay. That is a diameter, a DIA, a, a point, a point nine seven centimeters. When I was a little bit older than you guys, I took a class called drafting, and we measured in millimeters, and we drew arrows and circles. It was very exacting. I learned a lot. What planet is oh, this now? Mars. 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 Okay. So this scale, if you cut these out, they would all go with that sun. I hope you learned something today. Remember, a planet, they're orbiting, so they're not in the same place. Our sun is a star, and actually our sun is not that big of a star. Our sun is really a small compared to some of the stars. Hey. You get to go around the earth and the sun so many times. Make the most of it. All right, get busy on your work. <laughs>